like chefs where we we shop in the morning, we chop all day, we make the sauce, we cook the stuff, and by the time it gets ready to hit the table, we're nauseous. The guys who make sausage probably never eat sausage. It was it was not the hardest movie I've ever worked on physically, but it was right up there. And um you know, um my takeaway always is Boy, what fun we had. And that's that's what's your home and warm, you know, sitting by a fire. You know, you tend to distill everything down to the essence of an experience. And the essence of this one was was very positive. It was a really cool vibe on the set, which was set by the incomparable presence of Nick Cage, who's such a professional, so dedicated, so loves what he does. <clears throat> and that's infectious. And, you know, the fish always stinks from the head, right? And when you have a great head like he does, you know, I've had a series of best friends. And when I say a series, it's because a lot of them are, are no longer with us. Uh, but um, I've had that feeling with every one of my best friends that, you know, I would get in the way of a truck for him and, and vice versa. And um, it's a beautiful thing to know that there's someone else on the planet that has your back that you can trust, it's not going to cock block you or not going to, you know, get a little too ambitious and, and try to, you know, make himself look better at your expense. That is just there wishing you well and um, so in tune with, with your well-being and your safety that he's willing to sacrifice himself in the, in the offing. That's a powerful thing. Robbie has got this, he's Irish. And he's got this old soul, and it's, it seems as though he's been around longer than either me or Nick. Strangely enough, even though he's chronologically like 22. Um, so uh, he was not this, you know, like blank slate ready to be written on, like what he was playing in the film. And the fact that he does such a good job playing that guy is a testament to his acting ability. I loved working with... Um, with the sword, uh, the sword master, Kevin McCurdy. He comes from the theater. He, um, he is a great instructor, but he's also a great taskmaster because I'm a lazy guy and I, I, feel, I feel like, okay, okay, I'll give you 10 minutes, we'll rehearse this, and then, you know, I'm going to have to take a coffee break or I'm going to have to go smoke a cigar. And he keeps me right there and say, okay, we're going to do this again and again and again. And, um, it's lucky that he did that because we only had an hour and a half to shoot that sword fight because we were losing the light. And uh, if, it, if it wasn't for the fact that he had the fight so ingrained in, in Robbie and I that we never would have gotten it. I, I equate it with going to high school. Once you take the final, you never remember any of that shit for the rest of your life. Because, I, wow, what an ordeal that was. <sighs> Trigonometry, forget about it. You know, and, and that's the way it is with me. I mean, you know, I, 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 I just walk off a movie where I'm being taught how to use a sword and I co go right on to the next one, and they have to start all over again. I don't know, it's like professional amnesia, maybe? I don't know. I, I just did a movie where I played a guy who got the operation and is now a woman. He went from Phil to Phyllis. My buddy Charlie Hunnam found the script. It's called Frankie Go Boom. And uh, he signed on to play Frankie. Um, and he calls me up and he says, Ron, there's two parts. And, you know, they, they want to know whether you're interested in either of them. One is, and he said, I know which one you're going to take. There's an aging actor who can't get arrested anymore. And he's in and out of rehab. And he's using and he's, 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 he's completely, you know, out of control. And I said, well, what's the other one? He goes, well, the other one only works for like a day. And it's a few scenes, and it's, it's a guy who used to be called Phil, but he's now Phyllis. He's transformed himself into, he's a, 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 a transsexual. So I said, all right, send me the script. And I call him up, and I say, I'm going for Phyllis. He goes, what? Why? I said, because when that door opens and you see me in a wig and a dress and lipstick and nail polish, it could have a little bang for its buck. It's the funniest script I've maybe read in 20 years. It's really funny. 